This video is brought to you by jvjujitsuonline.com, the home to all JV Jiu Jitsu content, your source for strike based Jiu Jitsu. Check it out. Welcome to the Master Plan Lecture Series. My name is Javier Vasquez, and today we will be discussing strategical basics, the central strategy behind the Master Plan. Let's go ahead and get started. So strategical basics, the central strategy, let's first start off by saying that we have primary, secondary, and supplemental strategies. The primary strategies are always in blue, secondary in green, and supplemental in pink. So the blue arrow signifies the central path, and it also signifies motion through time. From the standing position, we first start off with striking offense. We utilize pressure pocket fighting in order to back an opponent up. It also makes it easier to hit them as well as being able to get close enough to them to take them down. We use a jab for distance management to control our entry. We utilize feints, motion, and angle cutting to corner opponents for striking and takedown purposes. Takedown offense, our primary weapon are single leg takedowns. Our indicators for closing the distance are when an opponent is frozen, when an opponent opens up to strike at you, or when an opponent is against the wall, a cage, or a ring rope. Once we take the opponent down, we're usually going to land in guard top. The primary strategy is to either split the guard or utilize the hook pass. The split series and hook pass can be swapped between primary and secondary. They work together as a team. From the takedown, you will also end up on turtle top. Sometimes you work up front snap down and then you circle behind them, end up in turtle top. The primary strategy is to trap the arm and attack the neck. The secondary strategy is to attack the neck, to trap the arm, to attack the neck. Supplemental strategies include pulling the hip, getting hooks in, and the turtle front transition, which allows you to work front headlocks and the front headlock series and the front choke series. Chest to back positions are very common finishing positions from standing. Landing gear prevents having to pass an opponent's guard. These are great positions to get to optimize finishing positions. Chest to back positions include the turtle and the back mount. Always remember that now the opponent is no longer facing us in a chest to chest configuration, but now they are chest to back. Primary strategies include trapping the arm and attacking the neck for the back mount. Secondary strategies include attacking the neck directly. Supplemental transitions to mount or side mount are possible from the back mount. It is very rare to land in mount top from a takedown, but it is possible. This will generally result in an opponent turning their back from mount top. So you take the person down to mount, they turn their back. Back mount and mount are linked through a twisting transition. Back mount and mount are linked through a twisting transition. They are linked transitionally from both an offensive and defensive perspective. Landing here from a takedown is optimal. Passing the guard will also land you here, side mount top. This is the central hub on the ground. From side mount, this means that you can reach all other core ground positions. Primary attacks include arm splitting and arm isolation strategies. Secondary attacks include guillotines and arm locks. Generating behavior to force transitions to turtle top or back mount offense. So the way we are attacking side mount forces the opponent to turn their back. Turtle top is a great way to get to an OFP, an optimized finishing position. The best position to trap opponent's arms is from turtle. Turtle top is the middle position between side mount and standing. Once I realized the importance of turtle top, I started to recognize that you can pull the person back to side mount. And also it uh, is the middle position to where if the opponent is on their way to try to stand up, this is where the battle takes place. And I feel that turtle top has been grossly undervalued in my lifetime as a grappler. Side mount and turtle are linked through a twisting transition. The turning transition between these two positions are vital to control. From the central hub, you can reach all other core ground positions, that is side mount. Using baking patterns between these positions will help to break an opponent mentally. 
What I mean by this is if you're able to control the twisting transition from either side mount to turtle top or from mount to back mount, controlling this transition, it creates an unbelievable amount of fatigue and frustration so that when the opponent lands in a vulnerable chest to back position, it is easier to secure the choke. The transition to back mount puts the opponent facing away from you. Back mount and turtle have a relationship. Turtle top and back mount offense are linked. One complements the other and they work as a team in order to achieve a unified goal to trap the arm and attack the neck. Mount top and side mount have a positional relationship as well. You can transition easily between these two positions utilizing a knee slide transition. From mount top, arm locks are very common. Arm locks can be achieved from a variety of positions. Leg locks are a great option when passing the guard is not possible. Leg locks are generally not energy efficient against larger opponents. So that was my presentation on the central strategy. I want you guys to understand that the entire master plan system has been thought through in great detail. There are reasons for me doing things the way I do things, whether it's strategically advantageous or uh, energetically advantageous, whatever it is, these positions and transitions have been thought through and have been tested over years of research and development. Check out the rest of our strategical lectures as well as the positional lectures. This will give you a framework in which to work from. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you real soon.